Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, Empathetic Wanders. If you are new to the channel, welcome and thank you so much for joining. If you're coming back for another video, I so appreciate it. If you don't know already, my name is Jeff. I'm from the United States. California specifically, uh, and for the past couple of years I've been traveling in Asia primarily, I actually live in Asia now, and I make videos on travel, finding local spots, language, food, really any way to connect with locals, to kind of access experiences that you might not think are accessible when traveling abroad. So if that's content that you're interested in, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the content that I'm putting out every single week. Uh, today I'm in California. This is actually the first time that I've ever vlogged in California. I am home dealing with some paperwork. Um, and about a week ago or two weeks ago, I had posted a photo of some kimchi that I had made that was vegan. And a lot of people were responding, wondering how I did that, how I made it, and wanted to see a video of me doing it. So I decided that I would do that today. Uh, if you are watching from America, then you know that there are lots of grocery, grocery, grocery stores, uh, Korean grocery stores specifically, that sell Korean products. Um, I imagine that these exist in other places too, I'm not sure, but I would recommend that if you're gonna try and make something like kimchi, uh, that you go to a Korean grocery store because there's often products that are not really available or are hard to find in other grocery stores or just like way more expensive. So um, for those that don't know, kimchi is fermented cabbage. Uh, it's a like kind of state, not kind of, it's a staple in Korean diet. Uh, it's served at almost every meal and it's a fermented cabbage, it's a bit spicy. And um, what people also don't know and what I didn't realize until only a few months ago, or I guess now almost a year ago, uh, is that kimchi is also not vegan. It's not even vegetarian. Two of the ingredients that they put in uh, kimchi in the paste are meat based. So one is actual shrimp and the other is fish sauce. So, wanted to figure out how to do a substitute so that I could create a dish for my vegan and vegetarian friends so that they could enjoy uh, kimchi because it's one of my favorite things. And I figured out how to do that. And so I just thought that I would take you guys to the Korean grocery store, pick up those ingredients because I don't have any of them, um, and just kind of show you what you need, what you don't need, and then come back, make um, the kimchi, and hopefully you guys all find it helpful. So uh, let's head to the Korean grocery store. All right, we are here. Um, just made it to the market and I'm gonna head in, but just wanted to go over the things that we're gonna grab. Um, so um, we need Napa cabbage, we need salt, we need water, but obviously I have that already. Um, we need glutinous rice flour. Let me turn the car off, sorry. I literally just got here. Uh, so we need uh, glutinous rice flour, but you can use just like normal all-purpose flour if you can't find it. Uh, and then we need brown sugar. Uh, we need radish, carrot, green onions, and garlic, ginger, onion, Korean pear, pumpkin puree. Those are the two uh, ingredients that we're using to veganize slash vegetarianize this dish. Uh, a hot pepper flakes, which in Korean is gochukaru. And yeah, it's a pretty easy dish. To be honest, it takes some time. Sorry. Uh, it takes some time, but it's not, there's not much like, the only thing you have to boil or like use a, like a stove top for is boiling the water, like the base that you have to make to make the pepper paste. But other than that, the, the, the greatest like inconvenience is just that it takes some time to um, sweat out the cabbage. So let's head inside the market, grab the ingredients, and then head home to make this vegan kimchi.
about two to three hours. Um, the majority of that time is spent waiting for the cabbage to you know, become malleable. So you're letting it kind of sweat out with the salt. Um, and so I take two hours. People do varying amounts of time, less time, more time, but I do two hours um, before I take the cabbage out and wash it off and all that stuff. So it's pretty affordable. Uh, I had to go and buy everything because I didn't have any of the products. And so it cost me, okay, I'm mercy. Cost me thirty-one dollars and nineteen cents USD, um, but a lot of those things I'm not going to be using all of it, right? Like the um, the glutinous rice powder, the uh, hot pepper flakes, the salt, like all those things are going to be reused time and time again, many, many, many times. So, in reality, the things that you'll probably have to buy every time that you buy kimchi, or every time that you make kimchi, rather it was, it came out to just under $10 USD. So it's really, really a cheap thing to be able to do. Uh, this is gonna make quite a lot of kimchi for me. Uh, I'm actually the only one in the house that's gonna be eating it. So um, it's it's uh, easy to make. So let's, let me show you, I'm looking at it right now. That's why I keep looking off the screen. But let me show you the different uh, ingredients and then we will get to starting. Okay, so these are like the dry products that you need. Uh, not all of this is for the kimchi itself, but here we've got the gochukaru, which is the hot pepper flakes, which makes the paste spicy. Um, so this is gochukaru, gochukaru. And then we have a little bit of ginger. This is a lot, obviously I'm not using all of this. But you put a little bit of ginger into the paste. Um, you put this many, actually, this many um, garlic cloves in um, the paste. Well, we're gonna go ahead and put that in a blender to mix it all up. This is, uh, I guess it's called black rice. I've always called it purple rice, but it's the rice that I usually get served when I'm in Korea. Um, I am too lazy and don't have a rice cooker, so I just wanna get ahead and got the cooked version already. So I'm just gonna pop that in uh, and serve that with the kimchi when I eat it. Um, this is pumpkin puree, which I actually was not able to find at the uh, Korean grocery store. I may have just not been looking in the right place, but I went to a different grocery store to get this. This is one of the substitutes to make it a vegan kimchi. Uh, and then here we have coarse salt, which is apparently important, uh, not normal salt. Coarse salt, uh, which you use to rub against the leaves of the napa cabbage. Um, and yeah, so it needs to be, and you can find this all, obviously, you can find this at the Korean grocery store. Um, this is roasted sesame seed, uh, which is just like an optional thing to add on to the end, which you can just put on um, the kimchi once it's done and when you're serving it. Uh, this is um, glutinous rice flour. Um, this is a Japanese brand, mochiko, um, but you can get it at a Korean grocery store. If you can't find glutinous rice powder, which is uh, one of the things that you put into the paste before you add in the vegetables and stuff, um, you can just use all, all purple flour, that's fine. Um, and then you can also, you also get brown sugar to put into the paste. So I just got some basic brown sugar that you can get at any grocery store, at least in the United States. So these are the dry products. So let's head on to the um, wet products. No, like the veggies and stuff like that. Right, so here we have all of the like vegetables and fruits that we need. Uh, obviously, we've got carrot here. We're gonna go ahead and shave that uh, so it's not you know whatever. This is what I mentioned at the market. This is called it's a Korean uh, vegetable called butchu. Um, it was translated as chives. I'm not exactly sure if that's correct, but um, I will put the Korean here. So if you ever see that at a Korean grocery store, you know. These are just traditional green onions. Um, apparently, the recipe calls for about six. Uh, so if you cannot find this, just add about three more of these. So um, if you can't get this, just make sure you have extra of this. Uh, this is just an onion, which we will only use a little bit of. Uh, this is an Asian pear, which is very specific. Uh, sorry, a Korean Asian pear. So it's very specific to Korea. Um, you can find it at Korean grocery stores. They will always have this little clothes and little shirt on. Um, and then we have the main attraction, which is napa cabbage, which is a cabbage from Korea. And then we have Korean radish. These, let's see. This is the second ingredient that makes it not uh, meat-based, so this is what makes it a vegan uh, dish. Um, and this, the radish, the carrot, all of these, they all go into the paste. So we're gonna make a base, and then we're gonna cut these into some pieces, put these into the base, and then we'll go ahead and rub that onto this cabbage once we have uh, worked through that. So um, yeah, let's start making this kimchi. One more thing that we want uh, to just make sure that you have before we start making it, you want a strainer to strain out the cabbage once it's done. You want a lot of bowls. Um, you preferably actually want a bigger bowl than I even have uh, because you're gonna wanna put the cabbage inside and let it sweat. So and you need a big enough bowl. The kimchi bowls that usually people use are, are very large. So definitely have enough bowls so that you can put stuff like the veggies that you're cutting up and all that stuff into one thing. And then you're definitely gonna want, I have a number of these um, like airtight containers. So I will put in a photo of an ongi, which is the typical way that kimchi is stored. I obviously do not have one of those, um, but this is an airtight Tupperware. Um, that I have, which is good for two reasons. One, because it keeps air out, which helps with the fermentation process. But two, kimchi has a very, very pungent smell. I enjoy it, I love it, but I don't want my other food to smell like it, and I don't want my entire refrigerator to smell like it. So having airtight containers helps with that. So let's head to getting the cabbage ready and get going. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is cut the uh, cabbage. We need to cut it into pieces um, because we need to give it some time to <clears throat> sweat out its uh, rigidity, right? So kimchi is like a very flexible thing. We need to rub it with salt and then let it sweat out in a bowl. That's what takes the most time. So let's do that first. All right, so first we are going to cut this in half. So we'll just start right here. And then the nice thing is because it's cabbage, it should just be able to pull apart. So the next thing that we wanna do is cut these into uh, halves again. So we want four pieces. This is a four pound piece of Napa cabbage. So all of my proportions will be in line with that. Uh, so if you get an eight pounder, then double whatever I do. I will put the um, amount in the description below. So you can go ahead and check that if you need any direction. 
So I've got all four pieces of my cabbage here. We're just gonna wash them off because apparently the salt sticks better when you wash them. Um, and also you just, I mean, I washed it before, but um, going to want to massage each piece of the Napa cabbage with that coarse salt that you got from the Korean grocery store. Um, you're definitely going to want, you need one big bowl, you probably need a couple bowls. I have three uh, because it gets a little dicey um, and we're just going to, dicey? What am I talking about? Um, I just need more space um, and I'm going to rub uh, salt on each leaf, literally each single leaf and then we're going to set it in the big bowl and let it sit for 30 minutes and turn it over. 30 minutes, turn it over, 30 minutes, turn it over, and one last time, 30 minutes, turn it over. And by those two hours, after those two hours, it will be ready to put the paste on. So let's do that. All right, so this is going to call for a quarter cup of salt. So if you have eight pounds, you're gonna do a half a cup, but we're basically just gonna take this and we are just going to uh, put it into each of these, um, pieces. Right now we're going to start working on the paste. Uh, as I showed you, um, you kind of just have to sprinkle it in. Some of the leaves are a little bit harder. Don't worry if some of the leaves fall off or something like that. Try and be gentle. Um, but at the end of the day, we're just giving it some time right now. So let's start with the making the paste. All right, so the first part of the paste that we have to make is the base. So we're gonna start first with water and a glutinous rice powder. It's called mochiko, it's a Japanese rice powder. Let's add that in. So we are going to do one cup of water and then we're just gonna do one tablespoon of this glutinous rice powder. Just gonna turn it on to medium heat. I have one to 10, I'm gonna do 6.5, maybe seven. We're just gonna wait for that to boil and then we will add the brown sugar. All right, so we've got this boiling now. We're just gonna go ahead and add that tablespoon of brown sugar and just mix it in. And then it will be this very silky smooth texture. So you'll take the heat off, let it cool, just move it off the heat and move on to the next part. All right, so it's been 30 minutes. Let's uh, look at the cabbage and flip it over. All right, so as you can tell, um, well, you can't really, uh, but it is starting to shrink a little bit. Um, if you look down at the bottom of this bowl, there is quite a lot of water. So basically what we wanna do is make sure that this top one that was not really sulking in the saltness saltiness gets to the bottom of the uh, bowl and then flip the other two on top I'm just gonna let this sit for another 30 minutes all right, so here we've got a peeled and washed uh, Korean radish. I have said many times in my videos that I love Korean radish when it's pickled. Uh, this is the beginning version of that. So we're gonna cut up one cup of <clears throat> these, of this radish into thin slices. So let's do that first. It looks like I have a little bit too much radish, but I'm probably just gonna put this in a bag and go ahead and pickle it uh, so that I can eat it like I like to eat it. So let's put these into the bowl. And then we're gonna go ahead and cut up the carrot. 
All right, so we've got a cleaned and peeled carrot here, and we want half a cup of this. But again, sorry for my cutting. I know it's not great. I'm curious as to how many people here are, you know, trying kimchi for the first time, or they've gone vegan and they didn't know how to make kimchi. Let me know in the comments below if this is your first time making it or first time trying it when you make it after this video, and how you like it. Um, and if you've had any other veganized kimchi, or veganized Korean meals. I'm not vegan, but I have no problem like having it uh, would, and would opt for it um, if I could. So super easy. I'm also munching here on some pickled radish, my favorite Korean side dish. All right, so we've got a little bit more than a half a cup, but it's okay. We'll just have some extra carrots. I'm gonna put these in here. All right, so we've got two ingredients left for, well, not really, but uh, two more things we're gonna cut up here. The first is gonna be uh, green onions. Um, for a four pound piece of Napa cabbage, we really only need about three to four. I bought a pack of them that had uh, six, and so I'm not gonna waste two, and I'm also not sure what I would use the last two for. So I'm just gonna put in all of them and it really is, it'll change a little bit of the taste of the paste, but it's kind of up to your uh, decision. So, um, and then after that, I'm gonna do one cup of this butchut, this uh, Korean chive, and we're gonna just dump that into this cup of veggies. All right, and then we're gonna need about a cup of this, uh, these uh, Korean chives, which again, if you cannot get them, it's all good. You can just use green onion to substitute the chives with a couple of... Um... All right, so for this part, we're gonna just blend the onion, the ginger, and the garlic together. I'm gonna use my Vitamix. Um, it won't really blend it perfectly, uh, so I'm gonna have to dump it out and then chop it up a little bit more. So if you don't have a blender, that definitely makes it a little bit more difficult, but finally, like as finely as you can, just chop it, mash it up as much as you can. We got half a cup of garlic cloves, so about um, 12 garlic cloves, and then we have a tablespoon of ginger. All right, so I did a pretty good job here. I am crying from the onions. But I do wanna cut this up just a little bit more. All right, so now we're going to uh, mix that onion, garlic, uh, ginger in with the base that we made, and then we're gonna put in our vegan alternative. So let's start with that. All right, so first we're gonna put this base in, which is very soupy and very thick. And then we are going to pour this, uh, or put this onion, garlic, ginger, Blend. All right, so it has been 30 minutes. We're gonna, as you can see, this is like sunk completely almost. It's almost completely level, which was, it was above, you know, it was very high up. So we're gonna go ahead and flip it again. So I'm just gonna do this. Our substitute for uh, shrimp and fish sauce is going to be a quarter of an Asian pear grated into the, the whole thing. All 
And then the last part is going to be half a cup of pumpkin puree. So then we are going to just mix that in all into one paste. And then the most important thing, well, other than the cabbage, we're gonna add in uh, hot pepper flakes, gochukaru. So I'm putting in a, a cup. You can put in as much as you'd like. Um, it just obviously makes it more spicy. I'm just gonna mix that up. And then from there, we're gonna take our veggies that we did, uh, that we cut up, and we're just gonna dump them all in. All right, the two hours is up. We are going to go ahead and wash the cabbage off and then we're gonna put the paste on. Uh, paste on. <clears throat> All right, so this is what it looks like when it ended. I'm gonna insert a clip of what it looked like when it began. Um, it's very flexible. You want to make sure that you get all of the salt out from inside the leaves. So it's really important to wash it thoroughly. We're also going to cut these little pieces off. Is that in the camera? Yeah, the ends off. gonna cut these pieces off right here and it might detach a couple pieces but it's okay so it's clean and this is what we've got right before we put the paste on so these are I mean, they're the size of my hand. Pretty small, very malleable, and it's gonna be pretty easy to put the paste on. From here, we are just going to take all of this cabbage, we're gonna put this kimchi paste, sorry, we're gonna put this kimchi paste on it, and we're gonna put it in a bowl that we can put in the fridge that's airtight. So let's start doing that. Look what I'm doing here. So I'm just bringing this into the bowl, nestling it in, and then I'm just literally getting a handful of this paste and I'm just putting it on in each layer. So kimchi is one of those things that you can leave for a long time in your fridge. It gets sweeter and sweeter as you leave it longer and longer. I like it so much, I usually end up eating it before <laughs> it has time to get uh, sweet. Because um, I really like fresh kimchi. Uh, I will eat some today and tomorrow, and tonight, and tomorrow morning, and, 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 and. But it's really hard to screw up at this point. You just have to, even if it, like this broke off. So you just rub it. Ooh, it smells good. It smells so good. Oh my God, it smells so good. Okay. If you are not interested in having stained things, I would recommend getting gloves. I don't have any, so I'm gonna do it barehanded, but uh, the red pepper paste is quite, uh, stains very easily. So, um, and you also like don't wanna touch your eyes and stuff because it would burn your eyes. Uh, so just be aware of that, get some gloves if you want to, and uh, let's make the paste.
right, and then this is how it turns out. And then you just put the lids on top, put them in the fridge, make sure they're airtight, and eat it whenever you want. I'm gonna pull out a little bit, show you guys how to cut it and um, make some rice and have a little bit right now. All right, then it's pretty simple. You just cut off what you'd like. This is one of the pieces, and I'm just gonna cut off a little bit here. Just be careful with the knife. And then I'm just gonna put the rest back into the bowl. This is the problem with not having gloves. You can't really carry anything. You're gonna get a little bit of the kimchi. Okay, get a little bit of the rice. Good. Spice is good. You can definitely taste those sesame seeds. So if you're into sesame seeds, go for it. If you're not, it's definitely a part of it. Oh my gosh. Kimchi is so good. Oh my god. Uh, I'm literally just gonna eat this for dinner. Mmm. So that wraps up the video. Um, I hope that that was helpful. I'm gonna go ahead and put in the description kind of like what proportions I was using and all that stuff. I'm surprised I didn't get anything on my clothes. Um, I shouldn't speak that quickly, but um, let me know in the comments below if you go ahead and do this, if you have any issues, if you have any questions, if you did anything differently or substituted anything else differently and how it turned out for you. If you like videos like this, please let me know. Um, I'm happy to do more recipe kinds of videos. It's not what I had like originally done or thought about doing, but doing dishes like this is certainly in line with what I'm trying to do. So I'm certainly happy to, to, to do that and, and learn along the way. Um, but thank you so much for watching. Uh, let's just keep being empathetic, keep wandering, keep eating, keep spreading positivity. Have a wonderful day, and I can't wait to see you in the next one. See you later. Bye.